You may think that you're not able to acquire an income producing asset, a multifamily property, single family property as a rental, simply because you lack the financing to do so. You might say, hey, I don't make enough out of my job. I don't qualify for a mortgage. So it's virtually impossible for me at this point to invest in properties. Well, what I'm here to share with you today, my friend in this video, is several ways to fund your real estate properties. Let's dive in. Some people think that according to certain different influencers, gurus out there like Dave Ramsey, for example, that, hey, you should be 100% debt free. I don't necessarily disagree with that. In fact, I do agree with it under certain parameters. If you're buying, let's say a watch or a car or anything that's for personal use, you should pay cash for it if you have the financial means to do so, right? You shouldn't be able to acquire personal items using debt, right? Because at the end of the day, you have to continue to trade your time for dollars to pay that debt off. However, I am a huge proponent in leveraging debt to acquire income producing assets. For instance, I would love to buy, imagine if you will, this was a 10 unit, right? Let's say all these are the units. I would love to buy a 10 unit with 10 tenants in there, receiving 10 checks a month from each of those 10 units, but I owe one lender called Bank of America, which is a mortgage company, because those tenants are actually paying the debt off on my behalf. So I don't have to trade my time for dollars. Pretty much what I'm doing is I'm trading my credit for passive dollars. Let's dive into that. I'm trading my credit, meaning I'm borrowing money based upon the credit worthiness that I have, or the credit worthiness of this asset based upon the income it produces to be able to acquire dollars, the passive income. And that's what you should do too. So let's talk about how you can leverage several forms of funding and financing so you can get your hands on some properties. So one of the ways I just mentioned was a mortgage. That's paramount. Being able to qualify for a mortgage and to use it to acquire property, that's, that's amazing because a mortgage company, you know, I'm talking about only investment properties here. I'm not talking about owner occupant, solely investment, meaning you're not living there. Typically, based, even though the market changes, but typically, generally, a mortgage lender will give you 80% of the money to acquire the property. 80% as long as they look at you, the borrower, to see how credit worthy you are and also how credit worthy or how profitable the asset itself is, the 10 units in that scenario, right? Now there's always exceptions to the rule. When you're doing commercial properties, bigger deals, they may care less about the borrower and the credit worthiness that they have to bring to the table. Meaning if you were syndicating a deal or you're being a general partner, a limited partnership, they may not look so much at your credit per se, but they will take a glance. But the majority of their underwriting, their emphasis of actually qualifying you for that mortgage would be on the asset, that 10 unit, for example. So getting a mortgage will cover 80%. So let's say you were able to get a mortgage cover 80%. And you might be wondering, well, how can I still come up with additional forms of financing because I have little to no capital in my, in my bank? Juan Pablo to actually buy a property. Good question. So if you're doing multifamily, that's five units and up. Commercial mortgages, they do allow a thing called seller financing, meaning they'll let the seller bring 10% of the purchase price to the table. So again, if you're buying this 10 unit, if you're buying this 10 unit for a million dollars, just to make the math easy, let's say $100,000 per, per door, it's pretty expensive. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm not to say you have to buy a property that cost, but just to make the math easy. If you're buying a 10 unit for a million dollars, the mortgage will cover 80% of that, which is 800,000, and they will allow the seller to finance up to 10%. So that's 90% of the financing cover right there. So what does that mean? That means that instead of bringing a 20,000 or $200,000 down payment to the table, mortgage covers 800,000, that's $200,000 remaining to buy a million dollar property, that 10 unit. The bank, the commercial lender for the 80%, the 800,000 would allow the seller to hold back a note. This is called a second mortgage or seller carry. Okay, seller financing in other words, all these words are synonymous, which basically means the seller's only gonna receive 100,000 from you at closing. Not including soft costs or closing costs, but just at closing for the down payment, 100,000 is coming from you, the borrower. But 100,000 is still owed, because remember, you needed 200,000 about his property. And so the seller is gonna create a second mortgage, a junior mortgage is also what it's called, and he's gonna allow you to pay him a, an additional payment to until that mortgage is paid off. So that's pretty good, because if you have limited funds, 
but then you can use seller finance into your advantage. Here's another way to further finance a deal. So let's say in that scenario, the mortgage companies cover 80%. 800,000. The seller's covering 10%, 100,000. There's 100,000 left over. What you can do is you can reach out to private money. Okay, I mean, this is the third way. Now, private money is broken down to two key categories. Either A, it could be lenders, or B, partners. Lenders are people who say, I can care less about the performance of the property. I just want my guaranteed principal back with a little bit of interest rate. In that case, you want to pitch them as a lender. Meaning, okay, lend me the money. I give you a promissory note. I'll pay you your principal at this time. I'll pay you your interest only payments or whatever you negotiate with that lender. I'll pay you your principal and your interest under these terms until it matures and then you're gone. Period. No ownership is required because you're getting a guaranteed interest rate return, etc. Now, a partner, on the other hand, when the asset performs, they perform. When you generate higher cash flow, high returns, and that partner as well generates higher cash flow and high returns. So this is a person who says, hey, I don't necessarily want to actually do the work. I just have money and I want my money to work for me. And But I do want to exchange my money for equity. I want a piece of the, of that tin unit. So in that case, whether that person is a lender or, uh, or a partner, you can structure them to bring the $100,000 or more to the table. So let's recap so far. You have a mortgage covering 80%, 800,000 that scenario. Seller financing 10% or 100,000 that scenario. And let's say you have private lenders or private partners and they bring another 100,000 to the table. If you add it all up, that's a million dollars right there. Now let's say here's another way, fourth way. Let's say that you may not have the proven track record. And so it may be challenging for you to raise the private money, whether it's lenders or partners. Sure, no problem. If you happen to have the, a decent credit or if you happen to have business experience, you can also use business funding. And that business funding can cover that latter 10%. That's what I did starting out. Because when I tried to raise capital, Hey, partner with me. Hey, lend me money so I can do this deal. And they will say to me, well, why on earth would I do that if you have no poor track record? Man, you're just as inexperienced as I am. The only difference is I have money and you don't. So you think I'm about to lend you my hard earned savings just so you can experience with, experiment with it, Juan Pablo? <laughs> that was hard. And uh, so what I did to get around, I said, okay, fair enough, that's, that's fair. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna leverage my my credit my my business experience to get business funding and i even used the business funding that covered our last percentage all right so let's recap so we just list several different ways to fund to finance your deals we talked about a mortgage we talked about seller financing we talked about private money which was broken down into two key categories we talked about uh as a lender and as a partner and last and certainly not least funding these are four different ways you can fund your deals using financing. But of course, if you have access to other forms of capital, not funding, but capital such as savings, or you have business income to sit in the bank, or you have money in your retirement account and so forth, you can actually use that as well. So if you really wanna to get to multifamily, I don't want you to discredit yourself and say, well, I don't have the credit right now or the money right now, so I can't do a deal. Sure you can, you just have to be creative right and in this video we talked about how you can leverage a mortgage how you can leverage many other forms of financing it's just that you got to have a strategy in place and even if you just like the credit and the capital there are career ways to do doing real estate as well. You can use mass lease options, uh, or lease options for single family, wraparound mortgages, uh, subject to just many ways that you can still receive passive income. Arbitrage, Airbnb strategy. There are still so many creative ways you can do real estate, but the first thing you need to do is get one of the three C's, the competency, because like we just said, if you like the other two C's, the credit and the cash, at least have the competency to get to that next level. So what I wanna share with you, if you watch this video, we discuss how you can get started in real estate. And then always guys, this is to your success. Continue to earn passively, live passionately, and make sure you take the money you receive from your massive income for your business to turn it over to your passive income through real estate. As always guys, to your success, take care, peace.